hear it. It just moved. Okay, so great. So welcome back to 30 Hour Day. We're in hour... Hour eight? eight? Eight. Hour eight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our sponsors are currently Web Trends. Yeah. We're and Web I, Trends location. I believe that we're raising money for the um, uh, the Oregon Trail chapter of the American Red Cross. That's correct. We are right now. So if you Which is know, really appropriate if you think about the topic right. that we're about to. Lots of people losing <laughs> blood. There's a, if you go to 30rday.org, mm -hmm. there's a donate now button where hopefully you're watching the stream and you can go ahead and donate. Or even more appropriately, you could go over to the last stand online dot com. Ooh, yes. And you could buy a t shirt. That's a good idea. Because the proceeds from that purchase of a t shirt are going to go to one of our charities. Thanks to Martin. Let's introduce our guest, Martin Vavra. Hello. Hello there. How are you? I'm doing really great. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the film that they just watched? Um, yeah, well, hopefully we're going to be talking about whole bunches of stuff on there. That was the complete season of The Last Stand. Oh, wait, no, it's not a season. You told me last time. It's a series. It's a series, yep. Yeah, series, series 1 is one. complete on there. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so that is, that Series 1. And uh, that's the only time that it's ever been shown in its entirety like that. That was the world premiere. That was. It really was, actually. That's kind of cool. Somebody <laughs> write that down. <laughs> this is the world premiere. I finally had a world one. premiere, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, currently, it's being run on a couple of distribution websites with mm -hmm. advertising on there, which is pretty cool. So mm -hmm. it's been picked up for that. Cool. And uh, and yeah, if, if people do buy shirts, that the proceeds do go to that. And it, that's also nice free advertising for us. So that would, yeah. I'd really appreciate that. Cool. That would be great stuff. Definitely. And it's this shirt that he's wearing right here, the FEKD, the Feed, Eat, Kill, Die shirt. Feed, fight, Eat, eat Kill, Die. Oh, fight. I thought it was Feed. Fight, eat, right. kill, die. I know it's your shirt. I know, that, I know, I know that you yeah. know what it is. I'm not arguing with you. Um, so why don't you introduce yourself? Oh, I'm Dan Kroon. I play the character Shots. Hello. How are you? I'm great. Kind of tired, but I'm great. Kind of tired. Yeah. And the interesting thing is, is Shots really doesn't ever talk. So this is the opportunity. Dan, <laughs> Dan will have more dialogue in this interview <laughs> than he does in the series. Yeah. <laughs> so how did you get involved in the Last Stand? I unfortunately have known him for quite a long time. I'm so sorry. We went to college together. You sound like my parents. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> and he called me up in a mad dash to go do the first film, and that's mm -hmm. how I got involved. No, was this one of the... I know that some of the actors didn't originally show up. Yeah, many of the people, in fact, uh, you're going to meet one person tonight who originally was going to have no lines mm -hmm. whatsoever. Uh, in fact, he he's here, the guy who had the lines, and he's now one of the leads, and the... the person whose spot he took is also here who's one of our crew people the the crew guy mike who you'll get to meet um had like swine flu monkey disease of some kind <laughs> he was, yeah he was yeah so he was on his deathbed and and bailed and so um yeah evan took his place and now evan is a major superstar internationally and mm -hmm. um yeah Mike, Mike's not. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. That's so That's sad for you. Yeah. Monkey pox. Really? The monkey pox are a horrible thing to have. Yeah. So, tell us a little bit about how you... This isn't like a zombie-inflicted pant. <laughs> Damage. Is it? Uh, Somebody gnawing No, not... Leg. Well, it was from gnawing, but not yeah. from zombies. Yeah, I think it was kids in an omsi function. Okay. Well, <laughs> totally so, you... Uh, we talked earlier in the square, and you said mm -hmm. you were going to give us some information about avoiding... So uh, uh, avoiding some things. Well, um, you know, the thing about, uh, first you have to understand your zombie environment. Okay. Are you dealing with shuffling zombies or are you dealing with running zombies? Because all of your tactics are completely different. But that is to assume that you've made it to the point where that's actually happening because you've got all the mass hysteria and confusion and chaos that goes on Honestly, prior that to that. Honestly, if you can't deal with a shuffling zombie, there's no hope for you. Well, I, I mean... There's like four movies worth of people that didn't yeah. deal with it very well. well. It's, kind of, it's the Pepe yeah. Le Pew version of zombies. They, they eventually catch up with Yeah, they they're everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it, yeah, but for two hours if you can't avoid them? Yeah, but that's... See, when you've got the shufflers, the thing about the shufflers is it's not about the speed, it's about volume. No, that's true. That <laughs> it's is, it's all yeah, about they, volume. They make it up on volume. They, yeah, they don't exactly. Have speed. And see, and it's now if you have watched Return of, I think it was Return of the Living Dead Part One. There's a time in there where they're burning some of the zombie bodies, and the smoke goes up, and it rains, and then the rain has the the ash and everything in it, and it rains down on the corpses. Well, what does it do in Portland? Apparently, on July second, which. It rains. <laughs> 
So a yeah, lot. so rain and burning carcasses, not good ideas. That no. just spreads the zombie stuff more. So. <laughs> This is um, stuff I didn't know. Yeah, so you got to be thinking about all this stuff. This is important, I'm never leaving especially with like monkeypox like stuff. Monkeypox <laughs> and zombies. Yeah. Can zombies get monkeypox? Uh, I don't know. It probably is some kind of a mutated monkeypox. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's not good. So what what can we do to avoid the running zombies? Uh, be faster than them. Yeah, that's right. Faster than Marty. <laughs> you only have to be faster than the guy behind you. <laughs> Um, you know, with the running ones, and especially like if you get into reading some of the stuff, the the Max Brooks books and all of that, mm -hmm. it that's really comes down to uh, having good weapons that don't do things like run out of ammunition or jam. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, fictional weapons? No, shovels, oh, okay. spikes, spears, those kind yes, of things okay. that keep you at a certain degree of distance and and have a reduced amount of splatter, so you're not like getting splattery stuff on you. <laughs> and uh, but oh, yeah, by Microsoft. Is. I mean, a shovel. A shovel's not going to run out of ammo. Correct. Yeah, guns but your do. Arm's guns do. Your you, well, yeah, but you know what? Fear of being chomped does a lot. There's a lot of adrenaline in that <laughs> situation. Yeah, I think. there there so is. So shovel. So you want to have a decent range. Uh huh. So yep. you can keep them. You know, at least at arm's length. Yep. Exactly. Those kind of things. You know, and and if you baseball bat. Uh, baseball bat is good. Oh, Shaun of the Dead. You got to love that. The cricket uh, stick yeah. too. Oh yes. yeah. I do love that. It re you know it, it really is one of those things you're you're probably not going to outrun the dead mm -hmm. just because if they if they really don't feel pain or that's not an issue like that and dead, you're, not yeah you're not really going to be I mean, you're not going to win that one. Zombies house thirty hour day. They would never. Be alive. <laughs> yeah. But then you wouldn't be able to have the slumber party. That's, that's true. true. Zombies so, are usually have to feed them the slumber party. Yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. yeah, and then you just have stains on the floor from mm -hmm. the drool and everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There would be yeah. less There's dialogue. <laughs> yeah. We need the power wash in the square. We would need the yeah, power wash yeah, in the square if we had the zombies. We would also need the power wash here at Web Trends. <laughs> we would have had to okay the zombie and have it with Justin first. Or laid out some bisqueen or something. We would yeah, have there you go. Okay, so what inspired you to make the movie for the series? Um, well, the the first the very first episode was not an accident, but it was there was there was a building that was about to be destroyed. Uh, a, a person that was working with me on doing some filming stuff wanted to do like a, a zombie comedy idea that she had. Mm -hmm. She hadn't written the script, but had the story idea, and we were looking for places to go and shoot. And I knew about this building, so we went and checked out the building, and uh, it was on the University of Portland campus. It was, and I have a friend who works there, so I called up while we we're checking out this building I said look we really want to film here what are the chances that U of P is going to let us and she said you got 24 to 48 hours and we're bulldozing it just with all the issues it was down by the water and it, it's a an very old burned out graffitied building they had fires and all sorts of issues so she said yeah you got 24 to 48 hours so uh, I, I just wrote a really, really quick script, and I guess because I was talking zombies with the friend, the zombies was on my mind, so I, I wrote out the script really quick. She kind of went through the whole thing, and I and I was calling friends at the same time. I was calling friends saying, show up at this spot. Tomorrow I'm we're so doing sorry this. I'm sorry that you went to college with me. Get your ass down. Yeah, here. that's exactly right. So, well, the nice thing is, is uh, another buddy of ours actually married one of his sisters, so he's got more, he has more issues <laughs> to really work nice out. Thing? He's He's got more issues to work out with that friendship than with me, so it, it's it's eased up on me. But yeah, um, no, but I, I was calling friends, writing the script, and we all showed up out there. Um, and lots of issues with things, people not showing up, gear, uh, broken microphone stand, and all of this. And there was just a lot of things, but we shot it. We did it pretty quickly, yeah. and then it was shelved for a while. And then I started to assemble it because I wanted a, a real piece where I said where I was a director, you know, something yeah. I directed. So I did it, and it looked pretty good. So I threw it out on the web. And what inspired it after that was the fact that so many people actually saw it. A lot of people saw the very first one, and admittedly, I threw it out on a zombie website. But these people were like, "That's awesome! When's the next one coming?" And I thought it was a failed <laughs> experiment. So when they were all like, "Well, when's that's episode why two it took happening?" So long to get the next episode. And that's exactly why it was because I didn't have. It, episode one ends at a cliffhanger, but and that's all it was. I just didn't put a bow around the whole th whole thing. So um, I called everyone together and and I just said, "Do you guys want to keep doing this? Like, I don't have any money and I don't really have anything going, but you know, let's still do this." And everyone that was part of it said, "Yeah, let's do it." Yeah, cool. And so, how many episodes? 
Um, there's a total of five episodes right now the way they were originally intended. Mm -hmm. uh, with the distribution that we have now, we're, we're going through two groups, a group called Render Yard, mm -hmm. um, and those are being played over on a website called Daily Motion. And Daily Motion is kind of, they're, they're about number two under YouTube for international views. Mm -hmm. um, so Daily Motion's running them, but they wanted to have something more than, like five was an odd number, mm -hmm. and they wanted them broken down into something a little bit smaller, because they get longer as they go along, they get about 10, 11 minutes. So they wanted shorter episodes um, that would go longer. Yeah. So we broke episodes three, four, and five in half. So we went from five episodes to now eight episodes. Okay. Yeah. But one tonight. Yeah, yeah. all one, one tonight. One that was the one, one time. Yeah. Cool. Hopefully you guys DVR'd it and now you're hacking it and putting it out on all of those internet borrow sites for free. <laughs> That's awesome. So before we um, before we rotate through, mm -hmm. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about series two. Mm-hmm. Series two. So series two um, had a story that I had written, mm -hmm. uh, and I had started working on the script about it, and uh, I didn't like where it was going, and because I was, I found that I was being very cliched in that, mm -hmm. um, and so I scrapped it and started to rewrite it again. And there was a, a film that we were going to work on that uh, the same group of us were going to be working on a feature film for the summer, and we were looking at a budget. Mm -hmm. Our budget situation went away, so mm -hmm. we started looking at going back to season two. So season two exists and I have got some story ideas in there that I've started to write in there and I, I just, I want it to be very original and very unique in some kind of way because I, I really was kind of going down a cliched path with what I had written for season two and I really just don't want to do that. Uh, and really the only thing that's holding season two back is, is funding and budget. That's really what it comes down to. One on most projects like that. I mean, that's really the way the film industry you guys, works. Are you doing Kickstarter? Yeah, I was just going to ask. Uh, I have not done Kickstarter. Okay. Um, and the only reason that I haven't done Kickstarter is because so many people do Kickstarter. I mean, it's it's really, like, I kind of feel like it would be a, a pebble in the ocean right now. Yeah. Um, not saying that I won't, but I'm saying that I want to... Not uh, saying I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to make you wait for it. Yeah. I, I want to I extinguish other avenues. The, the biggest thing that I really want to try to believe in is say, look, this is what we did for almost nothing. Yeah. And this is the kind of a response that we have. You know, for, for our daily motion views, we're, we're at... Uh, for the... the six episodes that have come out so far on Daily Motion, we're just short of 50,000 views, which is really awesome yeah. in my perspective. Yeah. But when you look at something like YouTube, there are guys who put out daily three-minute shows, they get 500,000 views in 24 hours. So 50,000 yeah. views is pretty minimal, and I'm, I, I would really like to be able to say that this is what we did for almost nothing, mm -hmm. and we've marketed it on our own. If we got a little bit of money, like I, I want to be able to say this is what we are capable of doing, and we can do more. And actually, and I guess do it like you would with a film, where someone goes, "I believe in you, and I want to invest in this to this degree." But then it's it's not just getting them to believe in your project; it's getting them to believe in this entirely different medium. Yeah. At the same time. Yeah, and be able to show a return on it because you know, it, yeah, good feelings and 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 high viewing doesn't pay the rent. Yeah. So there's a there's a reality to that kind of thing that that has to be met. So we're hoping to kind of bring all of those kind of realities together. So if you're looking to fund, you know, a web series <coughs> and do something new and innovative, you know, you could find them at thelaststandonline.com. Yeah, and you can wear a really great shirt, and you can be donating tonight uh, to the Red Cross. And you get a bumper sticker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bumper stuff. bumper stickers with the shirts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you guys so much. I think yeah. we're going to go ahead and switch out and bring two more on. Cool, right. we'll do. Yeah? You awesome. just send us a couple people. Make sure that they're not going to Send in brains. two more. Send in, <laughs> send in some more victims, please. No. Oh, the one on his arm. <laughs> <laughs> Give us the one with the gun. <laughs> bring the big guns. <laughs> one do I get? So you just sit down you and talk into the mic and we'll okay. give Rachel the, the lab. So you just drink behind you. Hi, I'm Cammy. Hi, Evan. Evan. Oh, so you're the one that accidentally got the part. Yes. Yes. Hi, Rachel. How are Hi, you? I'm very good. How are you? 
I'm doing, I took a little 10 minute shut eye. I didn't actually get to sleep, but I'm doing much better than I was when you first got here. Well, no, that's good because <laughs> what, what time is it now? I usually go to bed at like 9.30. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I want to make sure that Evan has questions asked him because he's one of the special effects gurus. He's not just oh. a pretty face on the camera. Excellent. Yeah. He's very nerdy. Thank you, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. He's always directing. Even when but in a metal <laughs> way. Sorry. Right, right. You're really nerdy. <laughs> Hardcore nerdy. Okay, so accidentally you became. Uh, yeah, I was at so work. So you were supposed to show up and do tech stuff and do special effects and. Uh, well, the way that it really started is uh, uh, Martin called me. Mm -hmm. I was at work, and he's like, "Yeah, what are the chances you can get off work early tomorrow and <laughs> come down and just be an extra in a zombie flick, and you have no lines, and we'll shoot you, and you'll be dead." You know, just wear your motorcycle jacket and hold a shotgun. And, like, that's all you have to do. And uh, and on top of that, I called a couple of friends and tried to get some people down there. And, um, and then, yeah, Mike didn't show up. Mike. And then suddenly uh, someone pointed at me and was like, hey, he looks like a zombie hunter. Let's just give him all the lines. It's the sideburns. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So the deal that I made with Martin is that I would act in exchange for uh, doing titling and special effects. So you wanted to do the titling and special effects. So you. Well, that's what I do professionally anyway. You said, you said Martin, I will give you all of this if you let me give you all of this. Right. Okay, you're not good at negotiating. Well, but I really want to do the muzzle flashes. <laughs> okay. And I had a lot of fun doing them. <laughs> it was worth it. That's good. And so, it was good for my reel as yeah. a post-production professional, so... So, uh, aside from j just being friends with Martin, what made you want to be involved in the project? Zombies. Aside from this awesome, <laughs> I mean, clearly. I mean, I'm a huge fan of, like, the Walking Dead mm -hmm. comic series, mm -hmm. which I was reading at the time that he called me, so I jumped at the chance. Mm -hmm. So. And so you uh, you went through the whole series? It's all done. Are you are you looking forward to series two? Are you still alive? Um, I have a... Uh, I am still alive. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't get to watch. I didn't have a monitor. I am still alive. The the uh, the contract that I have with Martin mm -hmm. is that if we do make a second season, um, I get a samurai sword nice. and I get a motorcycle. Very nice. Uh, and if those Excellent. two things are Martin, <laughs> what? you actually why are you agree laughing? To this? Uh, you. Did you and actually I agree to this, Martin? <laughs> Yes. Yes, yes okay. he did. I actually Excellent. was there. Mm -hmm. I heard it all. And uh, if so, if they do I'm a second season, <laughs> if they do a second season and they give me those two things, I will do it gladly. A Davis will and return. A very, very nice. And Rachel, when did you come on? Oh, um, well, I actually came on to this uh, last August. Mm -hmm. um, last July is when I met Martin, mm -hmm. and um, him and I worked on a project that I was doing, and. He had, it was just probably a few months after, I'm sorry, excuse me, a few weeks after we had finished my project, I had seen The Last Stand, the first episode. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I had seen that, I commented back to him that I really liked it and I thought it was, you know, a, a great short film. So then he contacted me and asked me whether or not, you know, him and I just kind of bounced some ideas um, back and forth about whether or not he should actually continue. And I said, yeah, yeah why not? And so we talked about some story ideas, and it just kind of went from there. And he asked me to be an assistant director to help him out, and then I also was able to help him with some of, you know, tightening up the story a little bit as well for each one of them, because where he was going with the story, I liked it, mind you. But there were some things that could have, you know, really helped, and end up, it ended up really helping each character and how they developed, yeah. which kind of, you know, keeps it going. I mean, do we want our audience to care about these characters? Well, yes, we do. Otherwise, they're not going to be invested in it, so. Well, we've been friends ever since. So what was your, what has been your favorite part, each of you, of working on it? Aside from the muzzle, muzzle flashes. flashes. <laughs> telling, tell, telling Martin to shut up, no. Um, no Could he I, do that if you weren't working on it? I, mean. I think just, for me personally, um, I really liked going out and doing the physical work of making the whole thing happen. Mm -hmm. I like helping out with finding locations, mm -hmm. finding the people. Mm -hmm. A lot of people find that boring and chaotic and just a ridiculous amount of organization is just not you know, their cup of tea, but I absolutely love it. Oh, and the waking up early. Gotta love that. <laughs> Getting up at 5.30 on a Saturday. Oh yeah, there's nothing like it. Which I don't mind. Crazy person waking up at 5.30 in the morning on a Saturday. No, so aside from muzzle flashes and 5.30, wake up calls. Um, we, we had this one scene at a, uh, 
condemned hotel mm -hmm. in downtown Portland. Mm -hmm. It was above the Lotus. Above the oh. Lotus. Yeah. And uh, yep. I mean, it was ancient. Mm -hmm. It was just covered with petrified um, pigeon carcasses, yeah. and yeah. Uh, uh, we had and some. This is his favorite part. <laughs> yeah. Right, and uh, you know, we're running through this hallway, and we we're killing all these zombies, we had and black lung for days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know, it was the one time during the series where, when I was acting, I actually got. Um, adrenaline rush, mm -hmm. you know, like we were being chased by zombies because we were actually being chased by zombies. I mean, that, how many <laughs> zombie extras did we have that day? We had uh, 25. Wow. We had 25, 25, which in a cramped space seems exactly. like a lot when yeah. they're got, you know, blood coming out of their eyes and stuff. A yeah. cramped, dark and, space. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Where you're running down a hallway and suddenly, you know, three zombies jump out at you and. Yeah. You're supposed to pretend to shoot them and mm -hmm. you just and you think really bang in your to. head and you hope that they don't fall on you and knock you over. Yeah. And then eat your brains. They, they were actors. <laughs> what? Wait. <laughs> Small <laughs> These aren't real zombies? Steak. Wait a second. This is what I, that was People with blood coming out of their eyes. Mm. I would be afraid they were eating my head. I don't know. That's just me. <laughs> that was the most fun I've had on a yeah. location. Yeah, that though. was the best. That was yeah, the best shooting day. Shoot. Yeah. All right. I agree. Well, I'm going to move you guys in. Oh, I'm going to okay. shuffle Thank you off okay. and have you guys send over two more people. Eventually, someone will bring a gun. Oh, yeah. See, the gun's coming oh, this yeah. time. Okay. Pack and heat. All right, it thanks. was really great to meet you. It was really good to see you again, Rachel. Yes. <laughs> Oh, see, now we got both guns, yeah, see? Lots of heat coming onto the set now. Hi, guys. Pretty low. So whoever sits here doesn't need to have a mic, and whoever sits there needs to put the lab on. Okay. <laughs> Get the the lab. sound guy. Okay. <laughs> I gotta clip my own lab? Yeah, you do. <laughs> this is a volunteer production, man. It's, yes, but, and I can draw oh. it, too. Oh. You know, I do a much better job of putting the lab mic on myself. I'm just... That's all just right. saying, maybe I should be the sound guy. I shouldn't. It's not true at all. You're not a guy. Well, it's true. But you know, you could use that as a gender neutral term. There we go. Dude. Sound dude. All right. <laughs> sound dude. <laughs> Excellent. Hi, I'm Cammy. Hi, I'm Mike. Mike. I am Mr. Monkeypox. Mr. Monkeypox. Yeah, Monkeypox guy. Uh, sorry, it was swine flu monkeypox. Swine flu. Monkey and. Pox. I'm Ken Webster. I did the music score and sound for the film. Okay. So it's yeah. natural that you would be carrying a gun. Yeah, this is my shotgun mic. <laughs> the bad joke. So how did you guys get involved in the project? Um, I've actually known Martin since eighth grade. Mm -hmm. um, so we grew up together um, when uh, he moved back to Portland. Um, I, I just got a random phone call one day saying, you know, hey, I just found this awesome place. and being in the middle of the monkeypox, I uh, uh, was like, oh yeah, that's great. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and of course, being Portland, it was raining like crazy. And he's like, we're just going to have you know a couple hours of running around through this, this building. And I'm like, I don't want to die. <laughs> um, so I'm going to stay uh, and, and be sick and apologize profusely and, Come back later. and volunteer to do whatever is necessary uh, to help on any of the other episodes. And had no idea what I had just put my foot into, <laughs> but uh, went with it anyway and had a had an absolute blast. Okay. And how did you get involved? A uh, gentleman I worked with, uh, he left the place. So I worked for PGE. He left, mm -hmm. opened up his own restaurant, and I was down there one day just having lunch, chatting him up a little bit, and he introduced me to Martin, and we Everybody started talking. Martin. Yeah, every, yeah, it's a small town. <laughs> uh, so Martin and I got to talking a little bit about, you know, just... Hey Martin, you know I do music composition. You know, keep me in mind for something if anything comes up. Mm -hmm. And I've been working on some other projects. And uh, strangely enough, the previous project uh, was a an offshoot of kind of the World War Z Max Brooks uh, type film mm -hmm. that was uh, in pre-production. So it already had zombies on the mind. Well, I don't know. I don't know if it was a month later or soon after. Uh, Martin gave me a ring and said, Hey, would you like to meet and talk about the film I'm doing, or set of films? And I said, Yeah, let's you know let's chat it up. And from that point on, he said, yeah, let's get together and we'll, you know, get you some shooting dates and we'll have you come out and, you know, meet the cast and crew and see about getting some music stuff going on, during, you know, during production and post. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of took off from there. Is there anything in, uh, unique about scoring for what is essentially, a sh you know, it's a short horror film? 
Yeah, uh, a little different than some of the films I've done in the past. Um, it was kind of the, the difference between if you can compare television to movies, where movies they have a lot longer to get certain things done, yeah. right. and those type of scripts I've been used to working on. This was a bit faster paced, mm -hmm. and I had to kind of get used to working on that type of schedule. And so that was a little new to me. And uh, you know, Martin, you know, thank God he knew exactly what he wanted, what he was really looking for. So he was able to give some real good advice, and you know, hey, this is what I hear here. You know, can you do this here? And it's like, oh, okay, that's making it a lot easier. And we were able to really get into a, a mode where you know things just started moving along a lot faster, and kept it a schedule that he needed. So yeah. it worked out really well. Excellent. Yeah. And so when you came back after not dying from the monkeypox and swine flu, mm -hmm. and you know whatever else horrible disease you had <laughs> concocted. Hey, Barry. <laughs> we all know that you just want to stay home and watch TV. <laughs> or run around in the rain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's really it. Um, what, what, you said, okay, I'll do whatever it takes, I'll do whatever it takes. Right. What did you wind up doing? Um, well, I actually went to college to do theater. Mm -hmm. I did technical theater. Um, so doing props uh, was one of the most easy things for me because that was kind of my specialty uh, in college. So, so that's the big guns. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Obviously, the moment there's a zombies, there needs to be weapons, and uh, that was one of the first things I was tapped to, to get a hold of. And luckily, I have a friend who works at a uh, local paintball uh, warehouse distributor, and they also do all of the airsoft stuff. So mm -hmm. I was able to call him up and say, I need a whole bunch of guns tomorrow. And he said, great, we've got these things that were product returns they were there was something defective about them but they look exactly fine they still you know everything is going to look like it needs to um, but but they can't resell it to somebody so I'll give them to you for two bucks a piece nice. and I said sold please give me what you got went went down there and literally filled my car with Exact firearm replicas, and so you just uh, two bucks a pop filled an arsenal. <laughs> Correct. You know you want to. I do. You're right. I Please do. do not point it directly <laughs> at anyone. I'm not, look, that's a light. <laughs> Camera. Right there. It is a light. Watch right out there. <laughs> Stay out okay. of the way. I'm putting it at the ground. How do you make this thing come out? Okay. Push so button. Push button. Full clip. Good like job. I said, I call it a thing and then I call it the right thing, but still. Correct. All right. <laughs> no, I'm fine. It? I'm not, no, I'm fine. We'll actually okay. call it a magazine <laughs> instead of a clip. A magazine okay. clip, whatever. Let me take it out again. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> Thank you. You bet. Um, I, it, it did cause a bit of a disturbance at my workplace, though, when <laughs> the. Um, <clears throat> when the CEO came back from lunch and then came over to my cube and said, is everything okay? And I'm like, what you got yeah, in your yeah, car? Yeah, yeah why? why? He's like, ah. And, and you, there was obviously concern on his face. And uh, he, he said, I was just coming back from lunch and I saw that you had um, well, some guns in your car, <laughs> and and I, I I had the choice not in of the building. yeah I had the choice of <laughs> severely messing with the guy or letting him off the hook, and it was one of those judgment calls where he was actually concerned. Yeah. So I had to say no, no, uh, zombie movie. Um, <laughs> they're, they're all airsoft. Uh, it's fake. Don't don't worry about it. I love how that's fine. like a reasonable answer. Zombie, zombie movie, movie, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, fine. Seems, <laughs> seems to what make sense to me. It does in Portland. <laughs> well, yes, exactly. <laughs> Right. Just know, right? Right. So, are you guys both signed on for series two when it happens? Because it will. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Definitely want to help Martin. Excellent. Cool. Excellent. Awesome. And maybe this time I can get more of an acting role than laying on a concrete slab covered in goo. That yeah. that's my my thirty <laughs> sure. seconds. Yeah. It's raising the bar. Right. All right. Yeah. So, that's his request. Get, he would like to have more than laying on a slab covered in goo. Can we make that work? No, he's just, he's yeah. just going to give me crap about getting monkey pox again. That's all. <laughs> no, he agreed to it. There's a camera. I'm sure it might pick that up somewhere. Keep his face down before we can reuse it. Oh, awesome. Oh, good. See? Good. See, aren't you glad you were face down? Exactly. Very convenient. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and have you guys. Excellent. We've Thank got, you. Thank you. We have two more or just one? Just one. Just one. Oh. oh. Has to fly solo. <sighs> nice.
Nice. Yeah. Sound guy. You're the no. sound guy? I'm the composer <laughs> who happened to do sound on the film. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah, thanks for breaking it for me. <laughs> thanks for killing it. It's okay, I can put it yeah. back together. <laughs> Come on down. You don't need this mic. You can just talk about this one. Hi, I'm Cammy. Hi, Cammy. I don't know how I got singled out. How did that happen? I don't happen? know, but you have to tell me your name. Sean. Sean. Hi, mm -hmm. Sean. This is Rick. Rick, good to meet you. Sean. Sean, what did you do for the last stand? I was Tennyson, the leader of survivors mm -hmm. from the uh, apocalypse. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. How'd that go for you? Not too well. All my people died. I was a pretty ineffectual leader. Not much of a leader. No, not you at led all. You led them all to their death. <laughs> That's Is that right. what you were leading them to. It depends on it depends on what you were trying to do. Well, I'm usually the first one to exit building. Uh -huh. I enter the scenes by myself. Yeah. That's how you got people to be the only one it. on the couch. <laughs> no, that's that's exactly <laughs> what it is. <laughs> that's right. I have like, no dude, we don't want to be on the couch with him. He gets everyone killed. I'm sorry. Oh, now I understand what it is. Yeah, yeah. that's what it is. Either that it's a wise move they on really their like part. They really like your hat, and they're afraid that they can't like you know live up to the style. I knitted this hat. That's a real no. You're He's good. a liar and a horrible leader, too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Do you have any redeeming qualities? Probably not. We'll see in <laughs> episode two, but uh, I don't think so. How did you get involved in the project? Uh, that's you funny. I was just uh, <laughs> asking Martin how I got involved. Um, I worked with Rachel on a 24-hour film festival for okay. a competition. Yeah. And um, they were nice enough to invite me to be on this project which I almost got fired off on the second episode. I went to the wrong location, ran my car off a road, wrecked it. <gasps> I know this they story. They had to rewrite the whole scene. It was, it was bad. I've yeah. heard this story. Well, that was the, with the hiking and the, yeah. 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 I, I got a very you. angry You're call a from maker. Martin, which actually made me want to be on the project even more at that point. Really? Yeah. He yelled at you and you are like, did. damn. I gotta yeah. do this. This is gonna be good. It's gonna be He's awesome. He's actually upset. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go and get, make sure everybody on the site gets killed. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and I did a good job. Yes. Excellent work. <laughs> so are you gonna get more people? I mean, will you get to lead others again? You know, I don't know what they're gonna entrust me with, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. We'll see. That's we'll the nice see. thing about the, about the writers not actually having their lives at stake. On camera, <laughs> is they'll give you as long as it's good for the production, they'll give you people to kill. Yeah, it's it's fine. Are you sure you're not like secretly in cahoots yeah. with the zombies? Well, we'll see how many red shirts I get. Yeah, I was going to say, how many red shirts got together with Captain Kirk? He would still have a job. Exactly, yeah. it's fine. See? It's not a big deal. I don't think it's an issue. I think you're looking at it the wrong way. Hmm. I'm glad I sat here on this couch with you. See, guys. it's it's really very therapeutic. <laughs> yeah, for your it leadership. is. <laughs> It'll be great. Did. Do I have to pay afterwards? <laughs> no, it's fine. It's all, it's all. You can see my secretary on the way out. It's all good. It's all good. While we have him there, I should note the lowly shirt that he's wearing that oh. fight, eat, kill, oh, die, feed. That's the zombie version. Is feed, eat, kill, um, die. Is available on the last online.com. And if you buy it now, the proceeds will go to the uh, Oregon. Trail chapter of the American Red Cross. It's a lot of words for one charity. Yeah, did the a Oregon great job. Trail chapter of the. Of the, of the <laughs> <laughs> read Write Web. Red, good, well done. Thank you. See, that's, that's I'm tired. See, Read Write Web is spelled with an R and a W and a W, but if you think about the W, uh, then you say white instead of right huh. or some other. It, it's late. This is 30 hour day. It's We're sponsored by Web Trends. Couch. Maybe you need to sit over here for some therapy? <laughs> okay. Yeah. You sit on that couch for a while and we'll talk about your issue of announcing tech websites. <laughs> yeah, that's right. How did you get involved? How did I get involved in this pro? Oh, I know Martin. Oh, of course. <laughs> Everybody knows Martin. <laughs> How, did I I know Kevin Bacon. Martin. How did I meet Martin? Wait a minute. I know when I met Martin, but I knew Martin before I met Martin. How did I. The Twitterverse. It was just all about oh, the Twitterverse. Twitter yeah. Twitter. Hmm. I'm not involved in the project. <laughs> I'm you not there. You might be in Series 2. <laughs> do you have any red shirts? I do. <laughs> He's willing to lead you. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. willing me to lead me to my death? Yeah. You, right. you let me know if you, you need... You just have to let me lead yeah. first. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you need someone to lead to their death on camera, you let me know. <laughs> I'm happy to oblige. Whatever, it's fine. I have a, I have a, I have a leather jacket. I have no idea. 
I don't know how to work a gun, but yeah. you know, whatever. Do you have a motorcycle and a katana? Yeah. I don't. I don't. I'm very sorry. I don't. I can't make that happen for you. He did such a better set of negotiations than I did. Do you want to negotiate now? Yeah, maybe we should. Let's renegotiate. Let's okay. Renegotiate, renegotiate contracts at this point. What do you want? Mm, more people. More people to lead to their death. Well, yeah. yeah okay. Absolutely. Okay. He would like I'm, more people to lead to their death. A lot of tasty people. Mm -hmm. I still think you're chipmunk. working for this. Oh, zombies. actually, I think I did make a request of killing small children zombies. Ah, that mm. would be nice. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay. Okay. That's Another fair. reason why I was kind of happy not to have to pay for the counseling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's fair. That's very fair. So he'd like to kill small children zombies, and he would like more people to lead to their death. Can we can we do that? <laughs> can we make that happen? That can that can happen. All right, good. We're yeah. making all kinds of stuff happen. Anything it's else? Great. If it if it doesn't happen, it's because he showed up at the wrong location. Late. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. fair. Then we'll get someone else to lead people to yeah, their death. That'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Does anyone else want anything from Martin while we're here? Well, while, while we're asking, <laughs> it's on. Do you need yeah, anything? It's being recorded. <laughs> people are watching. Anyone? Anyone? Anyone want something from Martin? Hmm. How about a drink after this? Oh, Ooh. oh hey, there yeah, you there you go. Well played. People have to stay here on staff. Well, <laughs> I have to stay on staff. <laughs> I'm really the big problem job when it comes to the purchasing alcohol. So, <clears throat> so yeah. Now, now it's my turn to sit here and have questions asked of me or something. Yeah, I don't know. We were told to stretch it, so... Oh, were we told to yeah, stretch? Yeah, we were told to stretch a little bit. I think somebody out here is responsible for scripting. Okay, who's, who's oh. responsible for scripting? Line? <laughs> no, who? Martin? You're the script writer, what? come on. Am I? Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're stretching. We're stretching a little bit. There you go. Got it. All right. Martin, what do you want from Martin? <laughs> what, can we, what can we get from Martin? From what, what do I want? Uh, I really would love to fund season two. Okay. Okay. Martin, can nice. we make it happen for Martin? Um, <laughs> no, no. feel very, uh, I mean, actually <laughs> talking about myself like that, I kind of feel like I'm back in therapy now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I've missed my calling. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about my mother well. This is, <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no, it's okay. We don't need to talk about your mother at all. We really no, I, I really, you know, the for most of us, I think, that have really gone, gone in on this, um, like, this is what I really want to do. Mm -hmm. I love doing filmmaking. I've mm -hmm. given up. Uh, I've had two prior careers, and I'm kind of at a point... Age-wise, not and all just that job, full-on careers. Careers, yeah. I was, uh, I worked for the government uh, as a, a fire ecologist. I worked oh, in, I it in wildland fire. I no, no, it wasn't all that secret. No, no. I know. It's kind of hard to hide a column of fire. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I, I did uh, forest firefighting and fire ecology, mm -hmm. um, and I left that to get my master's in teaching. And I was a science teacher for middle school for a couple of years, and I really didn't. Neither one of those worked for me. I, I did uh, fourteen years of firefighting was easier than two years of middle school science yeah yeah no no um, those middle school mm -hmm. so i mean i'm kind of i'm kind of out of out of options at this point in time but this is so the filmmaker one thing. is it yeah but this is the <laughs> one thing that i that i i love yeah. I, that i that i really really just absolutely love being able to do and and it goes back to i was six years old in 1977 and star wars came out i remember seeing the trailers for it for other things and like i just fell in love with that whole fantasy and all of that and i've i've really been engrossed in film and movies for so long and 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 other aspects just that idea of of living in the fantasy lands of comic books and stories and all of that and and filmmaking is just this fantastic aspect and mm -hmm. you know and I'm I, I gave up a, a very successful career that had a decent paycheck and retirement and all of that to live now as I guess really a starving artist mm -hmm. which doesn't mean you're a good artist but you're still starving yeah. <laughs> so you know I, this is this is what I want to do so being able to go on and do series two is a very serious thing and being able to go on and make the next the next film the next story you know be able to tell that is is something i really want to to do like this is it so and how is it 
you know, I spend most of my time in the tech startup world, mm -hmm. and a lot of people there talk about how difficult it is to do that kind of work in Portland. So, mm -hmm. from a from a filmmaker standpoint, like what kind of what kind of difficulties do you have that you might not have somewhere else, or what kind of advantages do you have that you might not have somewhere else just because you're here and trying to do it in Portland? Well, there's um, there's there's good and bad to all of that because yeah. Portland kind of has like it's almost like the the beginning buds of what people would like to consider a a, a film community. There is a film community here, but one that kind of goes beyond the borders of being Portland. Mm -hmm. You know, because we do have leverage that's here in town now. We've had a few films mm -hmm. that have been shot here, so like there's the this beginning of things that are bigger than just the city limits when it comes to film. Yep. Um, and the internet has open that up because not only are we talking about film where we've got things on either television or on on the big screen but the web is this really huge area and it's I, I really consider it a lot like the Wild West because there are treasures and things to be out, had out there but it really is like you're you're gunslinging it a lot of times you're fighting you're feasting over scraps with other people man and and uh, um, and it's tough. The because the web is is what it is. Like with our web series, things really have exploded in the last two years. Uh, for anybody that knows um, some of the like the final days of uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel, there was a there was a gal that was on there, Felicia Day. Yeah. Never really made it in Hollywood very much. She just tried and, and didn't get anywhere. And she did her own project called The Guild. And the first scenes of The Guild. There were people that watched it, but then she did uh, Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog with mm -hmm. Joss Whedon, and that exploded, and, and that explosion came from and now everyone the knows Guild. Who she is. Yeah. Everyone knows, and they just finished doing season four of that, and her success with what happened in season one and two mm -hmm. proved that there was a commercial viability with something that people were, were doing out of their garages, really, yeah. you know, that you could have a good story and have good characters and it wasn't going to cost you millions of dollars or even tens of thousands you could do something that people wanted to see mm -hmm. but because the web is such a lawless land out there people want it for free so right. the guild doesn't charge for their episodes we don't charge for our episodes most people don't charge for their episodes mm -hmm. So where do you make your revenue to be able to bring that back? And that makes it really tough. Yeah. And it's and it's because become, advertising on the web is difficult. Yeah, it, it really is. You know, when when uh, with what we have with Daily Motion and Render Yard, we we do get a little bit of revenue off of that. Mm -hmm. It's one penny. You know, when somebody watches something with an ad in it, yeah. you get one penny. Wow. Okay. So it when when you start talking about well, ten thousand views or like we had fifty thousand views. Well, you know that equals out to about fifty dollars once you pay the marketing and the distribution people that do all of that stuff. Right. You know, so you really have to start looking at the guild kind of numbers where you put an episode out. And you get a million views in a day or two. Yep. Like that's what you you have to have that, and that's even hard. You know, if you have something like uh, a, a major motion picture comes out, and you've got uh, Eclipse just came out, mm -hmm. and it made eighty million dollars, I think over the weekend, something like that. It made a lot, mm -hmm. but you figure that that's ten dollars a person. Mm -hmm. That's not eighty million people that saw that. That's not right. eight million people that saw that. That's, I mean, there's a lot of money at stake there, but. A, an episode of the Guild gets more people in one day than than Eclipse gets in a weekend of being filmed. So it's it's just such a it's a crazy place because it, it's you just never know. Like all it takes is that one person to email it out to somebody in their office right. and it goes everywhere and everybody watches it. Or you just never get seen again. No matter how good it is, there's stuff mm -hmm. out there that's fantastic that nobody sees. Right. And there's stuff out there that that you know some guy gets hit with a football. In between the legs, right. and, <laughs> and it's you know, you YouTube pays that shot's gonna get you a million yeah. views like that, yeah. no problem. Yeah, so, there, you know, yeah. the the kid that the kid that got doped up at the dentist, and he's in right. the back seat, and his dad's filming it from the rearview mirror. Right. That yeah. that guy made a hundred and fifty thousand dollars off of that yeah. video with this kid going, Ugh, "Dad," you know. And Hopefully, that's his college fund. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> paid off the house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but do you do, are you? 
have you been happy with the web? Are you going to stay with the web, or do you have are you do you have aspirations of going to another? I love the web. Okay. This is uh, uh, the web, Portland, filmmaking, all of that stuff. Yeah. This is really a time of flux. I really honestly believe that we're in a renaissance. Yeah. Uh, or at the beginning of what could turn into a renaissance period because we've had, with the economic downturn, we've had environmental problems, economic problems. A lot of people are really questioning who, what... You know, and, and if you look at Renaissance periods, they had those times where there was a lot of crash and uh, usually a lot of times where there was disease and famine and war that really drove populations down and, you know, hopefully not anything like that catastrophic is going to happen. But there's a time of reflection where people really stand back and stop and go, what does this all mean? Mm -hmm. And some people are willing to step back and say, I'm going to leave my job with my with my retirement and my health and all of that other stuff because I love this part uh -huh. and it starts a, a culture of, of art and science that otherwise wasn't being started because everything else was doing okay right and I think we could be at that place so I think the web is 100% viable as yeah. a as a place for entertainment yeah yeah I agree I want well, I'm interested to see where where it goes it's the money. That's yeah. that's the tough part. Is that's is, figuring, yeah, figuring it, it really is, and that's nothing is going to dictate that more than the than the 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 people watching. That's really where the decision's going to be. Is is where they're going to put their money. Yeah. And that's the thing with anything on the internet, though. It's difficult to raise it because yeah, oh, mm -hmm. a penny, a penny of you. The same thing with the blog. I mean. Yeah. yeah, because people have paid for their internet service. They just paid fifty dollars a month to be able to right. have that, so right. they don't want to pay again and again and again. So it becomes, it, it really becomes, a, it's a value. People decide what's valuable, and and you know if, if they'll be entertained, and and people's attention span is very short on the web too. So mm -hmm. that has to factor into it. Yeah. yeah. Well, then the webs. I mean, you know, the your your episodes aren't long, so that's mm -hmm. not. So if it wasn't zombies. Someday the zombie series will be over. Then what? Um, there's a lot of things. I, there's lots of stories that that are in my head, um, both narrative and documentary. Mm -hmm. I have some. I, I really love documentary film, even though it doesn't have a commercial aspect to it. There's some stories out there I really want to tell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you just did a documentary for uh, the the Gay Pride Weekend. Uh, yeah, I was shooting for Pride, and so I'm putting together some kind of advertisement pieces for them, mm -hmm. kind of uh, live event documenting stuff. I just turned in a 15-minute uh, documentary short that is about a, uh, uh, a man who his partner was up at a, a particular hospital, and uh, the guy was on his deathbed, and when it came to a decision time, they actually asked the the partner to leave. They said, "Well, you know, you can't be here. You're not family." He's like, "Well, I'm, but I'm the registered domestic partner." Well, that doesn't matter, but it does by the law. So, yeah. um, it's a short, and it's a it's a it's a story that he he tells his story from his life and realizing he was who he was and how his relationships developed and that kind of thing mm -hmm. up until. Um, the the tragic day, and then it and it kind of gets into the social cultural aspect of what the word marriage means, uh, what it means to you know partner or all 